B2 Spirit versus Tu 160. White Swan, who's the true ruler of the skies? Two legends fly above us. One was born for invisibility, the other for speed and raw power. But this isn't a dogfight story. It's a battle of technology and strategy. Today, we put two giants head to head. America's Ghost, the B2 Spirit, and Russia's supersonic beast, the Tu-160 White Swan. So, who really rules the skies? But before we begin, drop your pick. Will stealth win, or will speed? Leave your guess in the comments, and we'll judge the result together at the end of the video. One design philosophy, two worlds, two minds. Let's start with design. The B-2 Spirit is one of aviation engineering's quietest revolutions. A tailless flying wing with no vertical stabilizers, its whole point is simple and brilliant. Be invisible to radar. When radar waves hit its surfaces, they don't bounce straight back. They scatter upward or to the sides. To enemy radar operators, it registers less like a massive bomber and more like a small bird. It's essentially there but not there, a ghost in the sky. That stealth isn't cheap. A single B-2 costs roughly two billion. That makes it one of the most expensive combat aircraft ever built, and also one of the least seen. Now meet its counterpart. The Tu-160 White Swan was conceived with a very different philosophy. Russia didn't build it to hide, they built it to dominate the skies. Though called the White Swan, it's as deadly as it is elegant. At about 55 meters long, roughly the size of a small airliner, it uses variable sweep wings to change shape for the mission. Wings out for stable flight. Wings swept back for supersonic dash. Top speed? Mach 2, twice the speed of sound. So while the B-2 glides silently, the Tu-160 comes roaring. One is a ninja, the other is an armored gladiator. Two payload and destructive power. Stealth or raw force? What do these giants carry? The B-2 can hold about 18 tons of bombs and missiles internally. All of that ordnance is stored inside the fuselage to preserve stealth. From nuclear warheads to precision-guided bombs, the B-2's job is to strike without being seen. The Tu-160, however, can carry nearly 40 tons, almost double. That makes it one of the heaviest strategic bombers in the world. Long-range cruise missiles, nuclear weapons, massive conventional payloads. It's basically a flying missile base. So the equation is simple. The B-2 operates like a silent surgeon. The Tu-160 hits like a giant hammer. Which is more effective? A blade in the dark, or an explosion that rattles the skies. Three range and endurance. Who can stay aloft longer? These planes aren't just designed to strike. They're built to reach the other side of the planet. The B-2 has a range of around 9,500 kilometers, extendable to 19,000 kilometers with aerial refueling. There's a recorded mission where a B-2 flew 44 hours without landing, nearly two full days in the sky. But the Tu-160 takes the edge in raw range, about 13,800 kilometers. That gives it true intercontinental reach. It can launch from Russia, cross the Atlantic, and return home without refueling. Yes, the Tu-160 wins on endurance, but remember, range only matters if you get to the target alive. For survivability, stealth versus this. Speed. This is where modern warfare's toughest question appears. The B-2 spirit slips through radars like a shadow. Its radar cross-section is so small, it can be comparable to a small bird. Enemy air defense crews may not even realize what hit them before the bombs detonate. The Tu-160 doesn't try to hide. It relies on speed to survive. When threatened, it can sprint to supersonic speeds and exit the engagement envelope. But modern radars and missile systems have become so advanced that speed alone may not guarantee survival anymore. So to survive, you either need to be unseen or too fast to catch. Which wins today? Stealth tech or supersonic speed? Five roles in war. Which mission is more critical? In an actual conflict, these two are not interchangeable. They play complementary roles. The B-2 often opens the fight. Its mission, 
penetrate enemy air defenses, blind radars, and destroy missile batteries and command nodes. It's a silent opening act. Once the B-2 has created space, heavier bombers like the B-52 Stratofortress can come in safely. The Tu-160, meanwhile, serves strategic missions. It can launch standoff missiles from long range, hitting targets thousands of kilometers away without crossing borders. So the B-2 is the covert assassin. The Tu-160 is the intercontinental strike platform. Both represent the apex of their respective war doctrines. Six conclusion. Who rules the skies? B-2 Spirit, a $2 billion invisible ghost. It blinds radars, approaches silently, and leaves enemies wondering where the strike came from. 2160 White Swan, a massive supersonic monster. With twice the payload, intercontinental range, and Mach 2 speed, it embodies power and deterrence. But the winner, it depends on the fight. If you need stealth, precision, and the first strike, B2 takes the stage. If you need show of force, range, and brute destructive capability, 2160 rules. One quietly commands the skies, the other thunders across them. One wins unseen, the other wins by being feared. Which one impresses you more? Write your pick in the comments. Let's see which side the audience favors. Don't forget to subscribe. In the next video, we'll examine a next generation bomber that could unseat both of these giants. Trust me, that aircraft could rewrite the rules of aerial warfare.